Well, in news of campus lunacy, a collection of 15 professors at Harvard, Yale, and Princeton universities have written a letter condemning, quote, the vice of conformism. Listen to this. It's, it's really interesting and smart. And telling their students to stand up to the real bigots on campus, the people who want to police everybody else's opinions. Think for yourself, the letter says. That means taking the trouble to learn and honestly consider the strongest arguments to be advanced on both or all sides of questions, including arguments for positions that others revile and want to stigmatize. Robert George is a Princeton professor. He signed the letter. He joins us tonight. Professor, thanks all for coming on. It's wonderful to be on your show, Tucker. Thank you for inviting me. There is, oh, I was thrilled to invite you. There's something so wonderfully subversive about how reasonable this letter is, that it's hard to imagine how anybody could disagree with a single word of it without humiliating himself. Has anyone raised any complaints about it? Well, if you go on uh, social media, you will find some people complaining about it, but they are the people that you would expect to uh, complain about it, the people who are perfectly content to have young people fall into groupthink uh, and into conformity and to just sign on with the dominant orthodoxy uh, in the uh, uh, intellectual world, on campuses, uh, in journalism, uh, and so forth. But this is, of course, exactly what we're standing up against. We're telling our students not to fall into that group think and conformism. Think for yourself. You should be pursuing the truth. That's what being in college is all about. It's yes. learning to pursue the truth, and it's learning to become a lifelong truth seeker. And you can't do that if you're just going to conform, fall in line with whatever the orthodoxy happens to be on campus. Whether, Tucker, it's of the right or of the left, it happens to be of the left right now. But the same thing would apply if it happened to be on the right. Well, that's right. And there's nothing political about your letter. Let me just state that emphatically. I mean, you could have written this oh, or signed it, from it as a communist, as a flat earther, as a John Bircher. It doesn't matter. You're arguing for open-mindedness. If you look at our signatories, uh, it's a group of professors, 15, it's now actually 16 of us, from Harvard, Yale, and Princeton. But we represent a spectrum of views about politics, uh, morality, religion. Uh, we're not all conservatives. I happen to be a conservative. Uh, but there are liberals who have, who have signed uh, as well because they share with me this fundamental commitment to education as being, as being truth-seeking and to the conviction that you cannot seek the truth if you're a conformist, if you're an ideologue, if you're a dogmatist, you need an open mind and a willingness to consider the very best arguments to be made on competing sides of questions and then make up your mind for yourself based on the weight of evidence and reason. Exactly. The left is like the medieval church punishing heretics. So you have this wonderful line in here that I, I think I, I want to put in my refrigerator. The only people who need fear, open-minded inquiry, and robust debate are the actual bigots, including those on campuses or in the broader society, who seek to project the hegemony of their opinions by claiming that to question those opinions is itself bigotry. If we could, if we could just have every college student memorize those two sentences, I, I think it would be a better country. Epithets like bigotry far too often are used to shut down debate. Uh, it's the equivalent of saying this conversation is over because the Bible says. Well, you can't continue to have a conversation if someone's going to use a conversation stopper. Uh, and just as we would accuse someone who tried to shut down conversation just by saying the Bible says of being a fundamentalist, all too often we have secular fundamentalists today, people who, because of their beliefs about uh, same-sex marriage or abortion or whatever the topic, immigration, it doesn't matter, because of their beliefs, they want to shut down debate and discussion by calling the other guys names, exactly. calling their debating partners names. Well, that's just out of bounds, and we're trying to tell our students, don't fall for it, don't put up with it, certainly don't practice it, but don't allow yourselves to be intimidated and bullied by those who do practice it. They are the real bigots. And it makes people so mediocre. I mean, I live in a world where I deal with it every single day, unfortunately. So last question, you've got 16 signatories to this letter. Why not 1,600? Well, we didn't seek 1,600. Uh, we um, wanted to get the letter out uh, before classes begin. And, of course, students are, are descending on universities right now. We especially wanted to reach new students, uh, recent high school students who are now on their way to college. So I didn't want to try to circulate this letter very, very widely. That takes a lot of time and effort, and people want to right. amend it and change this and change that. <laughs> so I reached out to colleagues at the institutions I know best, uh, people I know share this conviction, ask them to sign an Almost everyone I asked to sign did sign, and, and I'm so grateful to them. They're wonderful people, brilliant scholars, and deeply committed to truth-seeking. 
Amen. Well, you're making me feel better. The fact that you're at Princeton makes me like the school. Professor Robbie George joining us tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tucker.